who it is. It's us. It's us. <laughs> how are you? How how you going? Hey everybody. Hello. Welcome. All the Wolf Den podcast. Be gentle. I'm wearing earbuds. No. Hello. <laughs> Oh, I hope those, Wake up! I hope those are good earbuds. Otherwise, they just exploded in your ear. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How you doing? Good hey, to see everybody. you. Thanks for being here. Uh, special thank you to Original Spiff for giving us 12 months and just a pile of nope for 10 months. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate you just being here. And the God of Good Chaos. Good Chaos. Thanks for the 12 months. Full year, thanks for the great content. Looking to get one of the new Mac Mini M2s. Any thoughts on them? So I I haven't tempted. looked into the Mac Minis at all. I'm tempted because they only start at like $600 for like the base model. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you're going to want to spec it up. But you can get an M2 Pro chip in a Mac Mini now. Oh, so you basically, oh, so that was the Mac Studio was the like, was the beefier yeah that had the Pro chips yeah. In this it. is your regular ass Mac Mini, uh, but now you can get a Pro chip in it. That's cool. Yeah, that's how, tempting. How much is it with the Pro? <laughs> chip? God bless you. Thank you. Excuse me. I think it's like twelve hundred, which isn't bad. Damn. All things considered, that's very good. Know? That's a respectable editing rig, especially because yeah. you could just leave an external hard drive plugged into it. Yeah. <laughs> Because they usually come with like 500 gigabytes or yeah, something. Yeah, which is never Pretty enough, shitty. So. But yeah, you could slap a an external. In yeah, there. absolutely. Yeah. That, there's, uh, that, so that's there you that, go. That, if you have the there. money, yeah, get the M2 Pro Mac Mini, I'd say. Damn. See, I like this thing. See, that's the the problem with the with the, 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 the M1s and the M2s yeah. is that the laptop becomes so much more powerful than a... Than a I know, like... I, I actually almost bought a Mac Studio, mm-hmm. but I like the portability too much. Like I like the option to unplug it and take yeah. it here or the couch or the toilet. See, see, I like that too. Now I don't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so like it was great when I went between my apartment and the studio yeah. and back and forth. Now I just sit here. Yeah. So like it is cool to like have this like at you know the kitchen counter or like yeah. in bed or whatever. But I could literally just have an iPad. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not usually editing in that in that sort of way. And I yeah. like it's good for travel and stuff, but I could totally just have a Mac Studio. Yeah. Anyway, uh Sachi, thank you for the prime. And Jiggle Jiggy Lee, thank you for the prime. iPads are great for uh for just consuming. Yo, I they are. took my iPad Pro from yeah. 2015. Mm-hmm. It's in the kitchen now, it lives in the kitchen. I got a nice. little wooden go. stand for it. Yeah, I it's use that nice. to watch all my YouTube videos when I cook and clean. I read all of my comics on it. It's great. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, I, I I would love one of the new iPad Pros because mm. they're sick. You yeah, got a USB C port. Uh, you can like edit videos and shit on there too because mm-hmm. it also has an M1. Yeah. Also, connecting it to a MacBook is awesome. Yeah. Because you you put it on one side and it just knows it's there. Yeah. And it just works seamlessly as a second monitor. But I can't justify that. There's yeah. no reason. For I know me that's, to have that's the problem. Like like, that. The the base the basic iPad, like the the regular S one that still has a lightning port, and it is like the best iPad for like ninety percent of people. Mm-hmm. Hell, I would even suggest getting the last gen's iPad because it's reasonably priced yeah, yeah you know they jacked up the price this year so anyway how you doing we got a lot to talk about today mm-hmm. uh we're gonna start by talking about live service games because of some news that happened with marvel's yes. avengers but we also want to talk about the last of Us show mm-hmm. want to talk about uh switch production they're making more switches yes surprise to no one three four three is still making halo <laughs> that's important uno oh i'm gonna put that you know why don't we oh yeah we should, we should we talk should about that start now yeah we should talk about that we, there's other things we gotta talk about but before we get into that let's talk about uno because uno is, is free is now free for switch online members yes. we always talk about whenever there's free games on yes. playstation plus or xbox live but now we have a nintendo switch online. active game. nintendo switch online members from today At 10 a.m. Pacific to January 29th at uh, midnight, essentially, you can download and try the full Uno game at no additional cost. That's just this week. Yeah. That's really it. Yeah. You're done on Sunday. 
And, and for a limited time, if you like the game, you can purchase the full version of Uno for 60% off. And that sale ends February 6th. How much is that? I mean, 60% off is a good chunk of change. Yeah, but the game can't be that much. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know? Uh, Uno is awesome. No, it is. Playing Uno with a with a bunch of people is kind of awesome. $4. You can get Uno for $4 right now. Down from ten, I might just do that. I should. might play this. Yeah, uh, this 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 is a. Uh, I I've played it on. Uh... Wait, do I have this? I don't know. I got my Switch hey, right here. You do. I, I know. I don't have this. I I have played Uno before. You ever see? Uh, I think one of Achievement Hunter's biggest videos is a three-hour-long video of them playing Uno. Well, I remember when uh, Uno hit Xbox 360 back in the That's day. That's what it was. It was that, yeah, because that was, Xbox. like, the most popular game on Xbox 360 because it was, like, one of the first that, like, really took advantage of, like, all the features of Xbox Live, mm -hmm. including, like, webcam support before Kinect came out. Oh, my God. So, you could just have your little guy in the corner? Yeah. It is... I do not have it. Oh. I think I have it on Steam. <laughs> Oh, no, I had it on iPad. I played it on iPad. Oh, there you go. You know, my roommate used to play it on the couch. I, I believe sit there it. and play yeah. online with other people. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there you go. Uno, play it for free. On, uh, I guess it's free for Nintendo Switch Online members, but I guess the whole it's the whole game, right? Yeah, whole game. They game did this trials like this are a perk of Nintendo Switch Online members along with other benefits. Okay, I'm not reading the benefits. Yeah, they did this a, uh, a few months ago. Do you remember before River City Girls 2 came out, they let you download and play the entire River City Girls 1 oh, for yeah. free? Yeah, yeah, And you can get a discount now. if you want to buy it. Right, right, right. I mean, I think it's really cool that they're starting to do things like this. Just giving you entire games to play for free for a week in addition to uh, like the free games you get in switch online regularly yeah we need more demos yeah because I, I, mean, I mean we know we need more demos in general but i like this idea of like adding an added benefit to your membership is just an entire free game for a week yeah like i i need a reason to to keep my membership yeah i'm dropping my playstation membership i keep talking about it but oh, i haven't yeah. actually done it are yet. you gonna just downgrade it to essential or are you going to get rid of it completely? I think I'm get rid of it completely i never touch it really am i going to lose my cloud saves if i do that i think you have like a year oh that's annoying yeah you have a time frame or maybe i'll just downgrade it though yeah because i don't want to lose my cloud saves i mean what do i really care about with cloud saves? <laughs> uh death stranding death stranding that's it but the thing is I'll like localize it and then you don't the really like because xbox just gives it to you for free yeah and like you don't realize how like essential that is until like you don't have it yeah i mean well i realize how essential it is with fucking nintendo because yeah. their cloud save situation is trash yeah anyway uh there you go try uno you got it right now yeah uh can i download it from my computer i think so yeah, let me just log in. Yeah. I, th I think it just... It should just work. Takes a long time. Yep, download. Done. Okay. All right. I'll link it in the uh, chat for you guys if you want to do it if you're live here. Uh, Remember when Nintendo Switch Online came with Super Mario 35? Yes. Actually, first it was Tetris 99. Yes. It's it still launched with Tetris 99, right? I don't. I think it came later. Okay. It might have been announced, um, like when it launched, and it was like going to coming soon mm -hmm. type deal. But it, it was there towards the beginning, and it's still available. Tetris ninety nine. And then they had Super Mario thirty five. Yes. And then that died. Yes. <laughs> they got they 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 completely killed it. Mm -hmm. You can still download and open the app, but you can't do anything. There's still daily challenges. That's interesting. But once you go to actually play, it yeah. uh, don't work. So I actually just did this right before because I was trying to think of a picture to take for, mm -hmm. for Twitter. And uh, I took a picture of me looking at Super Mario 35. And then uh, the online service is no longer available. Thank yeah. you for your continued interest. You're welcome, Nintendo, <laughs> for my continued interest. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's we're we're a little lucky there because we didn't pay for this game. Yeah, you paid for Marvel's Avengers. Actually, no, it was a Christmas gift. Oh, so someone else. So paid someone for it. paid yes. for it. And I feel, I, a I feel bad because the game wasn't good. Okay. And B I feel even bad because, uh, come the end of the year, I'm not going to be able to play it ever again. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that's actually not true. Uh, so it was announced that it's the it's the end game for Marvel's Avengers. Ooh, the 2020 video game did. developed by Crystal Dynamics and published by Square Enix won't get any new content or features after March 31st when the game's final update, version 2.8, is released. All official support for the game and digital purchases of the game will come to an end on September 30th, 2023. November's uh, update 2.7, which added the Winter Soldiers to the roster and playable heroes, um, and the Cloning Lab Omega level threat, is the new is the final new content to be added to the game. Uh, there will there will be no new cosmetics added to the game's marketplace, and all final balance updates will occur with the update 2.1 in March. Crystal Dynamics said that the game's single player and multiplayer content will remain playable indefinitely, even after official support ends in September. However, after September 30th of this year, we cannot guarantee that we will be able to address issues that occur due to unforeseen circumstances, the studio cautioned. The developer also said that starting March 31st, all of the game's marketplace challenge card and shipment cosmetics content will be made available to all players for free. That includes every single outfit, takedown, emote, and nameplate. Ending support for Marvel's Avengers, Crystal Dynamics said that the decision was made in conjunction with our partners, according to an FAQ the developer posted on Friday. Marvel's Avengers was released on Google Stadia, uh, PS4, <laughs> Windows PC, and Xbox One in September 2022 to generally lukewarm reception. It was later upgraded uh, to support PS5 and Xbox Series X after those consoles launched. Publisher Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics delivered a handful of new heroes to the game over time, including Black Panther, Jane Foster's Mighty Thor, Kate Bishop, and Spider-Man to the base roster, um, which included Hulk, Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, Ms. Marvel, and Black Widow. Spider-Man, a PlayStation exclusive hero, will remain exclusive to the PlayStation version, according to Crystal Dynamics. That's probably a contract they couldn't get out of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Square Enix sold off Crystal Dynamics to Embracer Group in May of this uh, of last year, putting the future of Marvel's Avengers, um, which already struggled with delays, angry players, and uh, compelling new content, further in doubt. Now it appears that the cool reception to the game and Crystal Dynamics diverting focus on new projects has sealed the superhero game's fate. So, when is this happening? When when is? Uh, so the final update is coming March thirty first. Okay. And the game will be uh the game will officially no longer get support and will be delisted on September 30th of this year. So what will you be able to do? The, the game single player and multiplayer content will remain playable so indefinitely. It looks like I mean single player you can still play the game. Okay. It looks like multiplayer should also be unaffected. Like you should still be able to play the game like with your friends if you have friends who actually want to play this game. Okay, so it's just delisted. Yes. But if you own it digitally, you can still download it. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It'll show up in like your in your purchases. history. Yeah. 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 It's still it's a, it's a big deal that you know three years into the lifespan of a major AAA live service game, especially one with the Marvel name on it, they're just saying like we're done. That's yeah. it. We can't keep this going anymore. That I mean, we we saw the writing on the walls before this game came out. We were looking at it. Yeah, I remember like, watching it at E three, going, "What the fuck is well, this game?" I mean, that was the we weird were thing. so confused because like the game they the showed the game and it and it just looked like a generic, uninteresting brawler, mm -hmm. and then like a few months before, like a month or so before the game actually came out, was the first hint that there was going to be live service elements to it. Yeah, it did not look like a live service game from the first yeah. trailer. Yeah, and hell, you play the game and it doesn't act like a live service game until like three levels in, mm -hmm. and then it just becomes that up until the last level again. It was just one of the weirdest bait and switches and like shoddily put together executions of a game I had like ever really seen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, try as they, the game was very expensive to make, and they never made their money back on it ever. And, Combined with the pandemic, which delayed all of the DLC, the all the things that would have helped make the game interesting, right. it just didn't come out like on a constant at a constant clip. You know, there this game never really stood a chance, like at all. It, it seems like Square had a history of trying to follow the money and see where uh, other people 
in uh, especially other with big companies are making their money like how to make games to make the most money especially with like their western studios yeah. at the time yeah, yeah exactly yeah. It, was, it was actually pretty much only their rest western yeah. studios doing that and well final fantasy i mean kind of well the main final fantasy games could just be final fantasy yeah oh it was like all the seven shit. is the one they fucked seven is well seven's a whole other yeah. issue but i mean like final fantasy like 15 just got to be final fantasy 15 right it's all the other weird spinoff shit that like had to be like live service and dlc palooza and whatnot yeah that, so. that they they made the mistake with hitman where they where they yeah. released it uh serialized yeah um and Final Fantasy VII, they were they were gonna make it uh, in parts, mm -hmm. and then they weren't, and then they did anyway. Yeah. So like they they were seemed to they seemed to be struggling with figuring out where the games industry was going, uh, and doing really weird like predatory ways to yeah, make you, their money. They were doing a lot of things that like they were, were shoehorning their games into being giant money makers where it didn't really make sense they were seeing what was working on like whatever was trendy at the time like uh mobile games especially and you know online battle royale type games and things like that like a, mm. not they a, did do a final fantasy battle royale yes they did that you know i'm not saying like they made a Fortnite game but they looked like they, they looked did. at well what i mean is they looked at like how games like Fortnite make money mm -hmm. and tried to do things similar to that yeah they looked at the top grossing games yeah. and they were like and they took all of their ips that were already in development and were like you turn it into Fortnite." yeah well with avengers they basically said uh crystal dynamics okay so you got the avengers license i don't know make destiny yeah with the <laughs> avengers you know a game nobody wanted oh this is interesting i was just trying to find footage of the final fantasy battle royale yeah and i found an article from october square enix kills final fantasy <laughs> battle royale before it's even a year old yeah uh their statement is end of service notice we are regretful to announce that we will be ending service of final fantasy 7 the first soldier at uh seven o'clock on january 11th oh it just happened it oh, there you go happened. we missed it uh we would like to thank you for your support so i mean this was a mobile game i think though yeah so this probably didn't cost any money although but then you're buying cosmetics for the game yeah. you know like like avengers had a ton of dlc and stuff but in the case of avengers it sounds like you could still play multiplayer yeah they said indefinitely but that can't be indefinite. It's a multiplayer game. Servers yeah. cost money. Yeah, they need so to allocate that. They're probably so going to be shut down completely. That yeah. will shut down eventually. I give that another yeah. year until there's like two people on. And I mean, I've, I'm assuming there's already like two people on. I really don't know who's playing this game. It seems like there's an attempt to try to uh, get like a final push. Not so much to revitalize it, but just sort of like to make it not so much of a waste. Yeah. Like they're they're giving all of the DLC for free. It looks like yeah. I mean yeah. that that's cool because like all the good costumes are paid DLC. Yeah. Like the ones in game are notoriously bad. <laughs> so like you can actually look like instead of looking like the stunt doubles from the movies, you can actually look like the main characters. From right, the movies. right. So that's probably another thing they probably had certain designs that looked really good that were like yeah. these are the game designs, and then they're like no, those are too cool. Yeah, put them behind the payroll. Yeah. I mean, look, the the game is bad. I'm going to say it again, but it is it's it is sad when a game like ends. Mm -hmm. Like when when a life when a game that uh relies on a live functionality ends and it's just even sadder when the game gets delisted. Yeah. You know, cuz then that just shuts it off completely from a whole wide range of people who maybe do are into these types of games. Maybe Destiny with Captain America appeals to you. Yeah. So it sounds cool. Yeah, it's not. But <laughs> um, which it's a good thing I have it on disc because if I ever want to play it, I can just pop it in. I don't have to worry about now hunting it down. That would make for an interesting video to uh, take a bunch of these games, uh, maybe PS4 games or something. Yeah. Uh, or even current games turn the internet off on your uh console yeah and try to put the disc in and see which games will actually function yeah because 
I think the list will be a lot smaller than we think. Oh, absolutely. I'd be surprised if you could plug Avengers in and just start playing. Yeah. I think that there might be some major issues that prevent oh, you from yeah. actually playing the game. Uh, we also, let's not forget, Square Enix has another Destiny-like game. They have Outriders. Oh, that's it's right. Very similar yeah. to Destiny. It's it's like a three player fire team. Type. Yeah. It looks exactly like Destiny. Yeah, uh, it's third person. Uh, you even have like a warlock, a, a titan, and a, and a hunter. Mm -hmm. Um, this game can't be around for much longer. Oh yeah, this I I Square seems to be hurting, and uh, I don't know which developer made this, but I'm pretty sure this is a Western developer. So, uh, this probably won't be around for too long. No. Speaking of Square, I didn't. Re I probably should have put two and two together. I have. We have a list. You know, spoiler. Alert, we have a list of other games, live service games that have been canceled prematurely. Mm -hmm. um, most recently, Babylon's Fall, which is a Square game. Oh, I didn't know this was a Square game that they shut down <laughs> after like six months. I. <laughs> it's Square Enix, and it was public. It was uh, developed by Platinum Games. Oh. So. Wait. I'm getting this confused with the Gearbox one. That's uh, Battleborn. Battleborn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Babylon's Fall uh, launched in March of 2022, um, and it struggled to attract players from the get-go. Square Enix confirmed it was pulling the plug um, on on your birthday, September 13th. Wow. Um, and Sorry. said it would run a final session of content uh, from November until the game goes dark uh, on February 28th of this year. This was. Platinum Games? Platinum Games and, uh, yeah, and published by Square. Why, why is Platinum Games such, held in such high regard? Well, <laughs> they, uh, they came out of the, well, they're held in such high regard initially because um, the studio was founded by a lot of people who left Capcom mm -hmm. at the time. And it was people who made, like, some of Capcom's biggest games, like Devil May Cry, Resident Evil 4. Okay. Um, Okami. I see the devil may cry. Yeah. I see that. Things like that. So, and when they came out of the gate, their first few games were fairly highly critically acclaimed, like Mad World and Bayonetta 1 and Vanquish. Um, I didn't know they did Mad World. Yeah. Vanquish, I hear a lot of good things. Yeah, Vanquish is very good. Yeah. Um, and it, <laughs> it's, it's funny because I remember reading somewhere there's technically there's two Platinums. You have the Platinum that makes uh, Bayonetta and the wonderful one on one and like those games, those really high quality games. And then you have the platinum that does uh this game. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> fall. Yeah, and this doesn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> but I now that I'm looking at it, it does look like a platinum game. It looks like Astral Chain, yeah. uh just a lot of protagonists yeah. thrown together. But it also kind of looks like Destiny. <laughs> Uh, there was around this time there were like a you know not around this time around the time of uh that battleborn around the time of battleborn mm -hmm. there were a lot of live service games. yes uh, or or yeah i guess you would call it live service but i'm thinking more like the destiny like uh uh well correct me if like i'm that. wrong but battleborn uh when did that come out uh 2016 so that was around the time of um overwatch the yes. hero shooter oh Genre, yeah that was it. that summer yes. was the hero shooter the hero shooter yes so like battleborn was really competing with overwatch and we all know how that turned out <laughs> oh so this was a team-based shooter yes oh oh and it was free to play yeah that yes it was competing with overwatch yeah battleborn then you had uh cliff blazinski's game uh, lawbreakers lawbreakers yeah. that was exactly yeah the same yeah and it was also free to play and that uh f w you know failed miserably yeah. i heard that they're they were all decent games yeah it's just like it was uh it was just poor timing on all of their parts well i think all at the same time overwatch came out bef uh after battleborn and Battleborn and Overwatch really? is like completely like well, took over the well, Overwatch was in development and known about for a yeah. long, long time before that. Yeah, and Overwatch is very good. <laughs> Did Overwatch really come out after that? Like, like literally, like a month after. Yeah, one month yeah. after that. in May. Oh no, the same month. Oh, Battleborn was May third. Overwatch was May twenty fourth. 
Oh. So it had no chance. It was literally just poor timing yeah. on everyone's part. Yeah. Uh, but Overwatch came out on top either because, you know, uh, Blizzard had such big marketing and such big pull and everybody knew yeah. Blizzard or because Overwatch was clearly the better game. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, know. like, you, look, you take one look at Overwatch and, like, you may not know who the characters are, but they are clearly defined interesting looking characters right from their visual design yeah. you look at battleborn characters and you're like who the fuck are these guys yeah speaking of uh ending a service now the new cool thing is to take a free-to-play game like overwatch mm -hmm. and just make it two and, and delete <laughs> the original game yes and that's what we saw with overwatch yes. did you know there's a new hero they released it in december i didn't know that i had a, i looked so i looked up something about overwatch yeah. uh yesterday and i was like wait there's a new guy <laughs> and i started looking up oh. oh there's a new guy um also uh freaking call of duty warzone yeah they just deleted the first game and now there's a second game that is worse than the first game oh, i want to go back and play the first <laughs> game and i can't all my cosmetics are gone yeah. like it's at least in overwatch all of your cosmetics carried over That's that nice. was kind of cool yeah but anyway, uh, do we skip anything? Oh, Anthem. Anthem's not Anthem. dead, but it might as well be. Yeah. I mean, that that was a game that had trouble from the get-go. Yeah. So I was looking up stuff about Anthem right before we started, and mm -hmm. uh, there was an article released today by Game Rant talking about how Bioware should repurpose, uh, or EA should repurpose the flying mechanics from from Anthem. Yeah. And I've been, I feel like I've been talking about it a lot recently, uh, how there's no game with good flying. Yeah. Uh, particularly because it's the only good thing that looks good about the Harry Potter game yeah. is that there's, it looks to be like there's some promising flying mechanics. Yeah. I got and into people, it on Twitter with somebody because he like, he, he was happy that like you finally came around to the game and he was like mad at me for telling people to download it illegally <laughs> if they don't want to give jk rowling money right and i'm like he just said the flying looks good he's not gonna yeah, buy not this, getting game. this fucking game <laughs> i'm no. not getting the game at all <laughs> i i want to try the flying yeah but i'm not buying the game no, no absolutely not that'd be a giant waste of money and I'm i not, do not want to play it and i'm not be and i'm trying to be funny if you do want to play this game but you don't want to support jk rowling Steal it. Steal a game. <laughs> Commit a crime. Yeah. You wouldn't download a car, but you would download a movie. Sure. Or or wait six months <laughs> yeah. for the game to be pennies or a free live service game. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the article that I saw today from Great Game Rant was talking about how they should repurpose the flying mechanics. Yeah. Uh, uh, they could... I mean, EA... Did EA lose the Star Wars license? I think they did. Uh, and no, I think they lost the exclusivity. Because okay. they're still making Jedi Survivor, but now, like, they opened up Star Wars to, like, other publishers. Because now Rocks, Not Rockstar. Ubisoft is making a game. Uh, Quantum... Quantic Dream is making a game. They talked about how the flying mechanics would be perfect for a Mandalorian style game or or, or a Bounty Hunter style yeah. game. Because it is, uh, you like overheat. Yeah. And it's kind of more like a uh, jetpack than it is like right, actual right. Iron Man flying. Um, so yeah, I agree. I think that'd be, they, they could totally use Anthem for parts. I feel bad. Cause like, I feel Anthem looked really good. Yeah. And I don't know what fell apart about it. I think it was another just poor timing. And it and, was, I mean, the problem is it came out like at that time period when EA was like really bad at like telling their development teams how to make games instead of just letting oh, them make games. And everybody hated Bioware. Well, cause this was after... Mass Effect, you know, the whole Mass Effect issue. You're right. Like right, Mass right. Effect 3 disappointed, Mass Effect Andromeda disappointed, and this was their whole new thing. So people were like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody, uh, Frankenstein in the chat says, Spellbreak had amazing flying, and they are, that's a live service game. Oh, okay. I'll have to look at that. I think that's done, right? Didn't they just end Spellbreak? That's another one that they, <laughs> they just fucking ended? <laughs> we're... we're Coming we're we're just like right there's now. a lot there's a lot of games that it was you don't... shut down on January 10th yeah of this year there's a lot of <laughs> games that like you don't realize have like shut down but like are shutting down you know yeah especially because like 
even like regular, not live service games, but like regular ass games that just happen to have a live multiplayer. Like those multiplayers, those online multiplayers eventually shut down at one point. I'll freak. I mean, it's been a while since I've like been in. I feel like it's been a while since they started shoehorning in multiplayer onto games that didn't de- deserve a multiplayer. Yeah. Like Uncharted. Yes. Like that did not need a multiplayer. That mm-hmm. was a waste of resources. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they would very quickly shut down those multiplayer yeah. servers because they'd realize nobody's freaking. But that would be a good like like bullet point on the box. Yeah. Like this game has multiplayer. Yeah. Oh, then maybe I'll pick it up or yeah. or. or it was a way to get people to play after they've beaten the game. Yeah. I remember uh, back in the 360 PS3 era. I'm sure you remember too. The whole, if you bought a game used, the mul- the multiplayer was $10 extra. Oh, yeah. So for- We've been through a lot. <laughs> for, for anyone who doesn't remember, during that era, in a way to combat used game sales, started with EA, but like other developers like took it on. Other publishers took it on this mantra. If you bought the game new, you get the whole game. If you bought the game used, um, multi- it was usually multiplayer, but sometimes it was something else. Multiplayer was an extra $10. Mm-hmm. If you bought the game new, they just gave you a code to download the multiplayer. Uh, I think it was it was one of the EA UFC games was the first game to have that, um, that uh policy behind it yeah it was also the first game of that policy to have its multiplayer shut down (laughs) it was a waste it was yeah it was a total waste it was but but during that time there were a lot of developers or or i'm sorry publishers who were finding things that they could put in the box that would only be for new customers yes uh i know batman arkham city catwoman was a new game exclusive if you Mm -hmm. Bought the game used, you have to pay $10 to play as Catwoman. Yeah. I mean, uh, before that, it was uh, like weapons and stuff. Yeah. Like you'd get an exclusive weapon if you bought the game new, yeah. which made people want to buy the game new. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was very confusing working at GameStop mm-hmm. at that time because sometimes if you bought the game new, the code would print on the receipt. Other times it was in the box. Yeah. So there, people would get mad and there'd be a lot of confusion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it went from extra weapon or a cosmetic item or something to straight up a whole ass character to yeah. a whole level or multiplayer locked behind yeah. buying it new and stuff. But that was also a way for, for these game companies to combat against GameStop. Yeah. Cause, and because they weren't making any money from GameStop and yet GameStop still here somehow. And they're hanging on by a thread, hanging on by a thread, but even still like in the day, like they still would run promotions with GameStop. Like they still have exclusive skins, like yeah, it was GameStop. weird. They I, part of GameStop's downfall was uh, <laughs> making money, uh, like from basically stealing from these bigger companies. Yeah. You know, like it, it, it's another, it's one big corporation just blatantly stealing from other big corporations. Right. So that wasn't just a sustainable business model at all. Also, some would argue they stole from regular people because they would give you, like, pennies for your games yeah. that you would sell. Yeah. Also, they treat their employees like trash, so. Yeah, I had a pretty good run because my manager was awesome. Right. But she took the brunt of everything yeah. and didn't distribute it down to the employees. She she just handled everything. Well. Yeah, also, yeah. she gave shit to everybody else. She just yelled at everybody. <laughs> like, all, all the yeah. upper management, she just fucking yelled at them. It was great. Um, but also like working there, you realize like people, like everybody complained about how cheap everything, like how you would never get any money for this trade-ins. Yeah. But, uh, pe- people would come in and they'd, they'd be like, here's my stack of games. And it's like, all right, I can give you like four bucks. I can give you like $25 credit or $4 cash. And they yeah. go, oh, that's fucking so dumb. Give me the $4. <laughs> and it's like, what do you mean? Yeah. Just leave. Sell these on yeah. eBay. But no, they want to, you know. They just want to get rid of them they're quickly. They're broke yeah. or, or they need money fast. Or most of the time, they're going right across the street to the liquor store. Yeah. So, who, like, really, whose fault is it? Yeah. You know, if just don't sell to GameStop if you're going to blame them. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, what were we talking about? Live service games. Yeah. Anthem shut down. Anthem, well, Anthem didn't really shut down. 
they it, just they just stopped service and they announced it back in February they weren't going to update the game yeah. or anything. Or, or or no, I'm sorry. In February they announced that they weren't going to work on the next anthem and they weren't going to work on like any new content. They were just going to release updates and that's pretty yeah. much it. And yeah, Anthem I felt bad about because like people didn't really like BioWare because of Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah. They felt like Mass Effect Andromeda was made by like a B team and then Anthem was made by like an A team. So yeah. then there was like a lot of hype around Anthem because they were like, ooh, if Mass Effect Andromeda sucked, maybe this game would be good. But I feel like people already had it out for them and weren't, you know. Yeah, but I think also there was way they would never have lived up to the hype. They would again. Anthem. This was also too around that era when like EA was like really hands on with like development, even when they shouldn't have been. Like everything had to be done in the Frostbite engine. Everything had to have like some sort of like yeah. microtransaction in it or things like that. Um, they would announce the game uh, way too early so that you know, and then have a release date that was way too soon. Yeah, things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think that's all of the live service games. I think, well, that we have. There's definitely there's more definitely more. Games. I found apparently um, Chocobo GP is shutting down. <laughs> that just came. Out. I know Square is not doing. No, good. they are not. Something's gonna happen to Square. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. Final Fantasy 16 better be the best selling game of all time. I Otherwise, think, I think at this point they're selling off their IPs and they're closing. I don't yeah. even think we're gonna hear. I don't think Square is gonna exist in another like two years. It definitely seems like they want to be bought. But I don't even think that the company, if they're shutting down all these services, I don't even know if the name will be around. I think they might just sell off the IPs. Maybe. At that point. Yeah. I mean, un unless the whole company gets bought and then like they can make Square Enix like a sub brand. Like if, if Sony buys Square Enix, yeah. then, you know, they have then they have like, you know, Naughty Dog insomniac uh santa monica studios square enix you know yeah. it's just another studio underneath the the sony interactive entertainment that's possible i just think that if a company's trying to be bought they would want all of these like bullet points they would want all well like, not a necessarily a lot of times when companies are looking for looking to be bought yeah. they'll they'll either sell off some assets or they'll try to uh, shut down certain things. I know they sold off a lot of Western stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, they'll do that to like make their portfolio look leaner and more profitable than it was beforehand. Okay. You know, it's basically about having a good number sheet to present to a potential buyer. True. True. Because, yeah, they're going to look at Chocobo GP making zero dollars. Yeah. Like, why is this? Why is this? Honest? Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. I got a knot in my hair. No, this is what I, I do when I get knots in my hair. No. You know, we, there, we, uh, we have a spray for our daughter to like help get I the got, tangles out. I got that. I got to just rip it. Just... Yeah, you ever try to brush? I have. I have a spray, and it is like a. It's for babies. Oh yeah. yeah no more I tangles. Mean, Johnson right. and Johnson. <laughs> no, it's like some shit I got on Amazon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you. You ever try to brush a toddler's hair? No, of course. It's like trying to trying That'd to be brush. weird and creepy if I did. <laughs> yeah, true. Yes. Uh, you, you mean you don't hang out with your niece? <laughs> no. it, it's like trying. It's like trying to brush the hair of, uh, of a Tasmanian devil. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't recommend. I understand. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's read some more notifications. Yes. While we're here, uh, where did we leave off? We left off. Webby Pumpkin. Thanks for the prime. <laughs> Jake the Bad Snake, thanks for the subscription. And Abstract Space, thanks for the Prime subscription. Hey, if you have Amazon Prime, it's free to support. Yeah. So, and you got to renew it every month because it doesn't automatically do it. Spankwise, also, thanks for the 17 months. Love the podcast and how you guys continue to grow and upgrade your, the show. Well, thanks. Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I moved, so we had to. Yeah. <laughs> it was much easier. Um, I saw someone in the chat. Uh, Flo, Will, when I get it. When you get a PS5, I will mail you my copy of Midnight Suns to the P.O. Box and let you play it as long as you send it back. That game was a lot better than I thought. I think you would like it. Please don't do that. <laughs> I will forget to mail you back the game. Also, fair warning, I'm sure it's great. I've heard very good things about Midnight Suns, especially the weird relationship mechanic in the game. Mm -hmm. I'm not into XCOM style games, so I will get bored and frustrated very quickly. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a game Look, either of us would like. Please keep your game. <laughs> if it ever goes on sale for like two dollars, I'll check it out. But I don't I don't want your games. This is nothing against you. I will forget to mail it back. Yeah, to you. we don't please don't. Yeah. Please don't do that. Don't give us work. Yeah. 
Anyway. Uh, uh, Flo also said my best experience at GameStop was getting fired from working there because I was pirating the games from the store. Oh, my God. Well, ha- we, you- had a, we had a lot of shady yeah. shit going on. Yeah. I mean, Might have participated in a little bit of <laughs> shady shit. Had you waited until this year when, you know, uh, Hogwarts Legacy came out, you would have been helping. Mm. True. Um. Okay, let's... What should we talk about now? Why don't we talk what, about... What uh, even is there to talk about? <laughs> I want to... Let's let's talk about Nintendo, because that's okay. kind of important. I just yes. deleted it, and I put it right back. It's important, and it's also kind of strange. <laughs> I, before I said it was obvious, uh, I think a lot of people were expecting Switch production to kind of ramp down, I guess, because yeah. everybody's expecting a new console. Yeah. But uh, they sold a lot last yeah. year, last year. I think Switch sales were up. Yeah. So like, or they were down like one percent or yeah. something. It like, was still it was still the best selling console last year. Yeah, the, the Switch sold a remarkably high amount. So yeah. uh, I don't think it's that weird to, yeah. to to ramp up Switch production this year. Nintendo is planning to ramp up Switch production in the next fiscal year ahead of the launch of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I think that makes sense. Sources familiar with the matter told Bloomberg that Nintendo has told suppliers and assembly partners that it plans to increase production in fiscal year 2023 to uh, 2024, meaning from the beginning of April. The increase in production is also a result of a component shortages subsiding after two years, according to the sources, which finally lets Nintendo overcome supply constraints and produce as many consoles as the market demands. The company admitted in August last year that these shortages were hurting sales, and while it... while it is apparently open to revising its new production plans if they prove too ambitious, the previously reduced sales are largely attributed to the component shortages. In The increased production plans are somewhat unusual given how long the Switch has been on the market, however, as it's now approaching its sixth year having originally launched in March of 2017. Tears of the Kingdom will likely uh, will likely create a spike in sales, however, given the success of its predecessor, Breath of the Wild, um, alongside Nintendo's teasing of it of it since 2019. So yeah, I think that it makes sense because last year there were a lot of big games that came out. Yeah, but none of them were as big as Tears of the Kingdom yeah. is going to be. I mean, yes, theoretically it makes sense. Like when you have a big game coming out, you're going to want to ramp up production mm-hmm. of systems so that people who maybe haven't gotten this system yet you know, but are waiting for this one game by the system for this one game. Right. It's just that the switch, like the article said, is in its like sixth year at this point. Mm. So God oh, bless you. Oh, I'm, I'm messed up today. Um so people who like theoretically already have already have a switch already have a switch. So who else is there left to sell to? People who want like of a second switch console for some reason. So that's that's the reason why people think that they would lower the the, the yeah. sales. Like, like they they would ramp down production. Yeah. But I mean that's true, but again, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be a huge game yes. and it's going to be a system seller. I mean the Switch is ramp is is reaching the end of its life cycle. But uh, people are going to want to play Tears of the Kingdom that don't have a Switch. So I don't see... I, 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 I mean, a lot of people are going to want to play this game have a Switch already. But yeah. there's going to be other people who are going to need some some Switches. Maybe they're erroneously seeing this as a system seller because Breath of the Wild sold so many Switches. Yeah. But that's a little different because that the Switch was brand new. Yeah. So I'm sure Nintendo knows that that the sales of Breath of the Wild was a little different than what this is going to be. Yeah. But uh, they must know that this is going to sell some systems. And I, 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 I think why not? Breath of the Wild sold 27 million copies on Switch. Mm-hmm. Do you really think that Tears of the Kingdom is going to sell 28 million? No, because... Um, Breath of the Wild was out for fucking like six years. Yeah. You know, like the Tears of the Kingdom isn't going to have. Actually, I should, I should revise that because it also sold uh, 1.69 million copies on the Wii U. <laughs> so let's so just. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So all those people who play Breath of the Wild on Wii U, but not Switch. 
I'm just I'm just saying 1.9 million on Wii U yeah. is a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of copies. All right. So all told, we'll, we'll do a nice round number. 30 million uh, copies of Breath of the Wild has been sold. Do you think that Tears of the Kingdom can sell 31 million copies? No. I, I you know, think yeah. I think that it would take too long. Well, what I'm what I'm trying to say is I don't think Tears of the Kingdom is going to ever outsell Breath of the Wild. Yeah. I think if anything, it's gonna match the sales pretty closely. I think it'll match I don't, I don't know who like people who you know didn't play the first one are gonna to want to play this one. I think the first year's sales of Breath of the Wild will match the first year's sales of Tears of the Kingdom. Right. That's what I think. Because more people have switches now. Yeah. And uh and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I, more people have switches now I than know, they did back then. I know like historically video game sequels have sold more than their predecessors, but I just don't know if this is gonna be one of those cases. I think this is gonna be one of those cases where if anything the the sales numbers are going to be very similar to each other. Yeah, I just don't think it could meet the same because, well, first of all, there was not a lot of stuff on the Switch when, right. when Breath of the Wild came out. But I think at this point, the sequel to Breath of the Wild is so hyped up right. that uh, everybody knows about it and everyone's excited about it and yeah. everybody's going to get it. it I, Nintendo has... Uh, crazy attach rates yeah. with a lot of their first party mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, and I think that Zelda will be one of them. So I, 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 what, what can you find the first year's sales of breath of the wild? Uh, Nintendo reported that breath of the wild sold, sold more than 1 million copies in the U S uh, in its first month. Um, 9,225,000, nine uh, were for the Switch, which was a hundred percent attach rate. Yeah, it was over a hundred percent. Yeah, um, at the time. Let's see here. Which means people were buying the game and not the console. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when the it came out in March, right? Yes. March, All right. March By 3rd. April, it sold three point eight four million copies in a month. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit! I don't know if that's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh. By March of 2019, the game had sold 14.27 million copies worldwide. All right. I think it's easy to assume 10 million first year. Yeah. Which is a, a fuck ton which of games. Which is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our that's our uh, uh, guess. Yeah. Is at least 10 million. 10 million in the first year. First year. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they're, they're also making a, a specific... Uh, Zelda OLED version. Yes. Of, of, of Tears of the... Yeah. Uh, they're making a Tears of the Kingdom special edition Nintendo yes. Switch. That probably won't come with the fucking game. No. Um, but it looks very cool. But it will look rad. It does look yeah. rad. Uh, I don't want to buy it, but yeah. it does look cool. And maybe I would like to do a video on it. I'll find someone who buys it. Um. Anyway. Uh, that's that. Yes. What, what what else should we talk? Let's talk about. Oh, let's say thank you to Austin Translation with the nine months. Uh, glad to see the Wolf Bros tonight. Thanks for the fun. Thank well, you. thanks for being here. Uh, and Crispy X, thanks for the fifty-two months. And Eric, hello. How you doing? Oh, Eric, thanks for the fifty-eight months. <laughs> uh, why not buy it? I thought you loved Zelda and Nintendo. I got too many switches. He does. Have There's a lot just of no reason for this one. Yeah. Anyway. Last of Us co-creator not credited on the TV show. Have you watched this yet? Nope. I only watched the first episode. Right. I finished. I finished it. Oh, that's a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have to watch the second one now. I'm currently watching uh, Welcome to Chippendales on Hulu. Let me tell you something. If you like drugs, crime, and male nudity, this is the show for you. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this was like Rescue Rangers. No. Oh, <laughs> no, it's about, the, the, about the male strip club uh, Chippendales. I will say, I am very surprised how uh, that male strip club is basically founded by greed and crime. Oh, well. <laughs> not, I mean, not what I expected. I mean, that sounds, yeah, yeah. that sounds accurate. Yeah. So, if you like, if you like dude butt, <laughs> I got, have I got a show for you. Anyway, in the wake of the success of HBO... 
In the wake of, of its success as an HBO adaptation, The Last of Us has recently been hailed as one of gaming's greatest stories, with Neil Druckmann widely cr uh, credited as its creator. But if you check the credits on Moby Games, you'll notice that the game's director is usually the guy named Bruce Straley. And Forgot about Bruce Straley. Uh, right? <laughs> and despite his deep connection to the game and a long career at Naughty Dog, Straley said in an interview with the LA Times that he's been completely excluded from the show. Straley was an, uh, an early Naughty Dog hire, uh, the 15th employee, uh, he said on his Twitter back in 2014, and has credits on games including Crash Team Racing and the original da Jack and Daxter trilogy. In 2007, he was one of two art directors on Uncharted Drake's Fortune and then moved up to game director on Uncharted 2, on which Druckmann worked uh, as the lead designer. The pair then teamed up for The Last of Us, with Straley as the game director and Druckmann as the creative director. After The Last of Us, he went on to direct Uncharted 4, but he did not come back to work on The Last of Us 2. Instead, he announced in 2017 that he was leaving the studio. After heading up three extremely demanding projects and taking extended time away from the office, I found my energy focusing on other directions, and I slowly realized that this was a signal that it's time to move on, Straley wrote on the Naughty Dog blog. Since then, according to the Times, the relationship between Straley, uh, who launched a new studio called Wildflower Interactive in 2022, and Naughty Dog has grown strained. And while Druckmann is visibly credited on the HBO show, Straley's name is nowhere to be seen. And he apparently he's apparently not making any money from it either. Oh. It's an argument for unionization that someone who has uh, part of a co-creation of the world and those characters isn't getting a credit or a nickel for the work they put into it, Straley said. Maybe we need unions in video game industry to be able to protect creators. The exclusion is particularly baffling um, in light of the fact that The Last of Us on HBO is such a note-for-note -note recreation of the 2013 video game. As Kotaku pointed out, Straley was given a special credit in The Last of Us Part 1 remake for his instrumental role in the development of The Last of Us. Unionization and crediting has become a major issue in the games industry in recent years, and while it's not and while this isn't the most egregious example of game developers being frozen out of their being frozen out from their former employers, it's definitely not a good look. Uh, PC Gamer has reached out to Sony HBO for comment. We'll update if uh, any of it's received. Um, Do you think that Neil Druckmann would have gotten a credit if he left Naughty Dog? No. Yeah. I think it would have said, based on the PlayStation video game created by Naughty Dog Studios. Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, yeah, too. absolutely. That being said, it do, it's, it's, it is very shitty that he is not getting credit, let alone financial compensation, for creating The Last of Us. So I don't know how it works, but uh, it shouldn't be that hard to put a little line in the credits that just it's just a line in the credits it says you know uh created by neil Druckmann and bruce Strayer. you'd be surprised so i can i can easily speak to this um batman mm -hmm. for period end of sentence <laughs> yes for like almost 80 years the byline read batman created by bob kane yeah because when bob kane sold all of his rights to Batman in his contract said you may you may do so so long as I Bob Kane am credited as the only creator of Batman forever yeah ignoring the fact that Bill Finger who wrote all the who actually wrote all the early Batman comics actually came up with the look of the suit mm -hmm. the name Bruce Wayne the name Gotham City, the character Commissioner Gordon, the characters of Robin, the Joker, Alfred, like all of that, who actually did the work because Bob Kane said, no, I created Batman and you're going to say I created Batman for years. It only took, you know, it, Bill Finger only recently got credit because his granddaughter came out and said, listen, I know what happened. Don't give me hush money. Give my grandfather credit. Yeah. So they fought the way they had to do it was they said Batman created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. Yeah. Whereas usually it's Superman created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Spider-Man created by Stanley and Steve. Yeah. Ditko. See the, the, Sta the Stanley Steve Ditko. I mean, the Stanley I've seen <laughs> the Stan Stanley's a whole nother yeah. can of worms, but you get my point. Like, 
character creation, like story creation is a very difficult thing. If you're not on the same page as your partner, it can lead to big problems down the road. And it looks like Straley is not on the same page with his partner so, anymore. So, so that is what I was trying to get at. It shouldn't be hard at all to just put a line in there yeah. that says... It shouldn't be, that, 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 that's, but it shockingly is. Yeah, it should just be, you know, yeah. give the credit where credit's due. Put yeah. the fucking line there, you yeah. know? Uh, but there could be a legal issue. Yeah. Like what you just said. <laughs> like there could, it could literally just be uh, some sort of contract somewhere that says if... I was thinking more along the lines of if they say that he created The Last of Us, they're giving him some sort of uh, uh, legal recognition that he deserves part of right. you know the last of us brand when it is wholly owned by naughty dog well even still like i mean credit like especially like creation credit is such a prized thing amongst this industry mm -hmm. you know for, it should be easy it, it like, should be, like, it's very but, important to to individuals like to, to have the credit under their belt but you know? credit in video games has been an issue since the very beginning mm -hmm. developers at atari were not allowed to put credits in their games because atari atari's mandate was atari makes the games yeah not individuals so developers had to hide their name in the game the world's first easter egg in adventure was the creator of the game yeah so this has been an ongoing issue. Credit has been an ongoing issue in video games to this day. I mean, you have fucking uh, the whole studio winning for Metroid Dread, winning the winning the award for Metroid Dread, and then uh, uh, Doug Bowser accepting the award. Right? He didn't do jack shit. <laughs> well, not only that, like this is this happen this happens constantly. If you leave a game at any point in development, even if you're there for like. 90% of the game's development, if you leave the game before the game ships, a lot of studios won't put your name in the credits. Yeah. The, that's going on right now with the Callisto Protocol. That happens with every single Rockstar game. I think part of that is they don't want to give them the legal recognition that they uh, that that they might like have something to do with the IP anymore. You know? Yeah. And And it is fucked up yeah that that's no, it's, the way that it's, it is. it's a long ongoing issue and i think this might be the highest profile yeah that it's been because now you have somebody who like look the last of us was a big deal when it came out like there were a lot of videos like hyping its release a lot of behind the scenes footage a lot of interviews with bruce straley and neil Druckmann standing in the same room together talking about this game they created yeah so it's not like they can hide from this. So what was Neil Druckmann, the creative director? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Because he did a lot. But yeah. I mean, I guess a creative director does a lot. Well, creative yeah. Creative director and then game director. Uh, let me just find what his actual role was. And then was he game director in the second one? Or was he also uh, creative director again? I don't. I mean, probably like lead. Yeah, lead creative director or something. Okay. I will say the show is uh, so far, it's pretty faithful. I mean, it's yeah. not like you know, beat for beat the exact same story, but it get it hits all of the important bullets. Right, it's, it's kind of so like you know, it is a game, so like you kind of are just seeing bullet points of a story where like they'll 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 be a a story beat. And then you're playing the game for an hour, and then another story beat, and yeah. then you're playing the game for an hour, and this just kind of cuts out the playing the game for an hour. Yeah. So they do a they, they do, for the first episode they did a very good job. Yeah. I would say. Uh, Neil Druckmann was creative director and uh, co uh, co writer. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um. So that's that. I think the show is pretty good. Uh, I'll watch the second episode. I get. How long is it though? Well, I'd imagine like it's got to be shorter than the first one. Yeah, I'd imagine after this point, you know, they're bit because that was the first episode. They want yeah. a big first episode, and then yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, any notifications? Yeah, we got Foul. With, Fifty-three uh, minutes is the second episode, and Foul resubscribe for fifty-three months. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Holy shit, that's a long time. You're right. Yep. Oh, and Wolf Den Dad is. In oh the boy. 
Breaking news, as reported on the Miles to Memory YouTube channel. What the hell? Oh, God. New York, New York has a slot machine that mimics Mario Kart. They're reporting that casinos are trying to develop slots that gamers would be interested in. We need to do a review. I'll get the tower suite at the Win Encore, or my name isn't Wolfman Dad. We, his birthday is next month. We should get him a cat. <laughs> we need to get him something that keeps him occupied all the time. <laughs> I'll just give him Zim. Yeah. You just have Zim. Just take him. So, they've been needing a dog for a long time. Yeah. Go get a dog. Yes. <laughs> we'll take care of it when you're in Florida. Yes. We trust you me. You need a dog. Your grandchildren need a dog in their life. <laughs> how could they have a slot machine that mimics mario kart nintendo would be on that yeah hobby. It, it's got to be like some sort of like knockoff mario kart thing yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna google this right now because it also just sounds like youtube clickbait yeah the tech matter says it's wario kart <laughs> you need to get me a net jet to, to the win shut up yeah and we we need to get you help <laughs> uh nope i got i got i got nothing with that uh by googling that no uh i do have a uh an interesting story i put at the bottom uh you know let's talk about it now all right uh i'm gonna move it to the right spot so this is fox news accuses xbox consoles of going woke (gasps) the worst thing you can do I thought this was interesting. I'm going to uh, skip to like the, they're talking about the M and M's. Yeah, how the M and M's. Uh, well, yeah, there, there's a fat chick M and M now, so all of a sudden now it's all now it's woke. a huge problem. Yeah, uh, and then they said we're not gonna have the fat chick M and M anymore. We're not gonna have any M and M's. We're just gonna, we're gonna, gonna have Maya Rudolph. Maya Rudolph. <laughs> so they're making fun of that, and then they also just randomly spit out. Uh, so Xbox, this is a direct quote from what happened on Fox News. So Xbox has also announced they're going woke too. Yeah, they just straight up said, uh, in, you know, because of climate change that they are adding a new feature to their default settings. I don't know what this feature is. So if you own an Xbox, you can upload this new program. No, you can't. No. And it will turn off after so long to save the environment, the power. And also, they are saying the energy-saving shutdown feature is going to have a slower boot time. Ted Cruz writes on Twitter, first gas stoves, then your coffee. Now they're now you're gunning for my Xbox. They will never take my I coffee. I will put my money that Ted Cruz does not play Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to put my hard-earned money on that. I uh, have definitely killed Ted Cruz in in Call of Duty before. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, isn't it crazy, though? Like, when we were kids, you were a rebel if you had, a like, a leather jacket and a pack of cigarettes. Now you have, like, a full-powered Xbox, and you're eating pizza, ro- pizza rolls on a gas stove. I mean, it is crazy what they're doing. But we understand what this is. It's not that it's actually going to offset emissions. The level of reduction is infinitesimal. But they are trying to recruit your kids into climate politics at an earlier age. Make them climate conscience conscious now. You're yeah, you're right. I don't think of that. They are going after the children. Oh no! Just, just to just because to rile only, you up more. Because only children play video games. Uh, they're they are specifically say yeah yeah you're right. They're going after the children. Yeah. They're trying at their hardest. To get you mad yeah. by bringing up your children. Um, also, what is the demographic now for gamers? Last I checked, it was most gamers were 35 yeah, years old. Yeah, it's still, which still is the demographic. Yeah, ve- Very old. Yes. <laughs> of course they are. But again, what's your what's the point of video games? It's for kids to be kids. Even though most gamers yeah. are 35 years old. Uh, now you sit down, pick up a controller, and they're like, by the way, the world is on fire. You know, that's always been the case. Every <laughs> So many video games yeah. is just death and destruction. You know what I mean? You just want to play a game. And if you if they cared, I think they would stop making games that kept kids trapped in the house. My kid played so much Xbox during the lockdowns, he didn't know there was a lockdown until two months in. 
most elect consumer electronic devices have uh, power efficiency settings that like turn off after a while and like boot up slowly as, as a way to like conserve power because you don't want to use too much power all right out of the do these gates. these people do they not have power bills like like it's saving power so that you save money it, it's it's a stupid feature that just the feature is it turns your xbox off yeah that's the feature the <laughs> xbox will turn off yeah, like your television. You don't want to leave it on. Like your television does. Like your computer. Can like do. you should do with your computer. Yes. you should turn your should computer you turn, down every yes. once in a while. You Not know? because you're saving the environment, like, but just because it's good for the computer. Like that and for your phone in bill. your pocket has a lot of power efficiency meters and and settings so that you don't waste your battery. Yes, so soon. Um, I, the, the the Xbox defaults to that sleep state that still does updates and stuff. Yes. So I guess this is like a more advanced sleep state that will actually. Well, no, I, I I read it at, well, like when they announced it. I read it as basically it just it defaults to turning that off because I don't have I don't have that on my Xbox. I just have you know cold shut down and cold start. Yeah. Like I don't do the. It does have, default to. Yeah sleeping all the time yeah so when you go to the power button it doesn't actually turn off yeah. which is a strange thing to do but well, but i will say that microsoft does a good job with their sleep so you can that, like unplug it and it doesn't even i care. think that would, that's a holdover from when uh connect was going to be required for the xbox one because it wasn't going to shut down completely because it needed to be on to hear you say xbox turn on right right right, right. so yeah so uh for some reason Xbox turning off is this huge like firestorm. Well, yeah. <laughs> Cause what's next? You're gonna have kids believe in Santa Claus and drag queens. <laughs> oh no, not the drag not the queens. drag queens. Anyway, uh, I just thought that was a funny little funny little goof to have. That is funny. Pe people who don't understand video games. Talking about video games and trying to make trying it, trying so, so hard, hard to make it something that it's not so hard, but you know it works. You know it's like it's I people, know it people works. who also don't understand what's going on are looking at that yeah. and going, "Yeah, yeah, they're coming after my kid. <laughs> I want to come after my kid. No more Xbox for yeah. you." And they throw we're, it out the a, window. We're a PlayStation None family. None of this woke shit. Yeah, we're a PlayStation. We're a PlayStation family. <laughs> Even though Xbox is an American thing, <laughs> they should like the Xbox. Well, no, because Xbox is propagating the global warming myth uh, that the, it was invented by Al Gore. The title of it was Xbox is Going Green. Yeah. Their logo! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Speaking of Xbox. Oh, we're still talking about Xbox. Yeah. Good. Uh, 343 still making Halo still making Halo despite being hit hard by uh, Microsoft layoffs people were not happy about this announcement uh, Halo Infinite developer 34 Industries took to Twitter on Saturday to share the uh, the brief message about the franchise's future Halo and Master Chief are here to stay 343 said in a statement attributed to the studio head uh, Pierre Hintz uh, 343 Industries will continue to develop Halo now and into the future, including epic stories, multiplayer, and more of what makes Halo great. The statement comes after Microsoft confirmed that it would lay off 10,000 employees before the end of March. According to Bloomberg's uh, Jason Schreier, 343 Industries was hit hard by the reduction and loss of Halo veteran and creative director Joe Stanton, um, who joined the studio in 2020 to help bring Infinite over the finish line to Microsoft's publishing division. Uh, Staten re Staten's reassignment follows a handful of other high-profile departures, including that of Slipspace Engine lead developer uh, David Berger and 343 co-founder Bonnie Ross. Schreier couldn't put a number on the cuts at 343, but he said Infinite's campaign team was particularly affected by the cuts. Prior to the layoffs, the studios... The studio also had a long-running hiring freeze in place and had lost a lot of co uh, contractors in recent weeks and months. One former 343 staff member blamed the layoffs on incompetent leadership on top. 
Microsoft released Halo Infinite in 2021 to generally positive reviews, but the game has since struggled to, re- uh, to maintain a consistent player base. On Steam, for instance, Infinite is currently averaging about 4,000 players per day, a steep drop from the 100,000 players it was averaging at launch. More than a year after the game's release, Microsoft also has yet to announce a new campaign content for Infinite. Halo fans rightfully have reason to be worried about the franchise's future. I want to see a documentary of like a no clip documentary of what the hell happened yeah with the development of halo infinite because i I understand why it was delayed the first time yeah uh but that second year like 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 the year after it was once it got delayed i need to know what happened at 343 yeah because obviously they were working really hard and 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 they were struggling but the end result was barely a game <laughs> like like they made it single player and it was pretty good yeah um the multiplayer felt like there was like like nothing there like a lot if, missing yeah. yeah it felt like there was uh, what happened what yeah. were they do what were they doing leading up to the point when they needed to to delay it like what it, when was the point where they realized we have nothing we can't release it like this yeah because then they released it and they were like we still have nothing but here it is yeah i mean i don't know i it, I would like to see a documentary on this too because the 343 era of Halo has not gone according to plan. Mm. <laughs> the studio was made specifically to make Halo games. Yeah. And, you know, a 4 came out and it was what it was. I think real people don't really like have hot and cold opinions about 4. At least not to my knowledge. 5, um, the single player campaign was an absolute disaster. The multiplayer was fine, but the single player was an absolute disaster. And now Infinite, with all of its problems and its delayed production and like all of that, I, I think the pe- reason why people are not happy with this tweet is because they don't want three four three making Halo games anymore, <laughs> because right. they just haven't been they haven't lived up to you know what Bungie was been doing with the series. So, so I was looking at some of the tweets just now because I want to try to get an understanding because you're right, people yeah. aren't happy with how Microsoft and I guess three four three have been handling Halo, right whose fault is it i mean i'd assume it's i mean microsoft owns 343 so right. it's got to be microsoft's it, it, fault. at the end of the day like it is microsoft's fault mm-hmm. because 343 like yes they actually make the games but they're still to a certain degree constrained by the publisher yeah. at some point and and microsoft's the one who put them together isn't it yeah yeah so it is there it is upper management's fault so especially when like their 343's publisher has been very bad about releasing and communicating um, with regards to its first party content. Mm-hmm. Like we still don't really have the first uh, major first party game on Xbox Series X aside from Halo Infinite. Um, and it's just it's a weird comparison because they basically they basically did the same thing with Gears. They made they created a studio, the Coalition, specifically to continue making Gears of War games, and people like those games. Those games are fine. So there's clearly something wrong at 343. Mm-hmm. But like like was said in the article, that's a problem that goes all the way to the top. Yeah. Like Phil Spencer like has to be aware of this. This would be like <clears throat> if Mario games started sucking. Yeah. Like that's Mario. Nintendo would stop everything immediately pull Mario from like an entire generation of games and not release a Mario game. Till they had something better than Mario Odyssey. Yeah, no, you're right. So, but that's not the way uh, you know Microsoft and most Western studios work. They need to have uh, a Halo game out every so often so people can buy a new Halo game. In the case of Infinite, they were banking so hard on Infinite being the game mm-hmm. for the generation, and uh, it wasn't. Yeah, it, well, they 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 missed they missed the deadline, and then the game just wasn't that yeah. good, and. Uh, it they had nothing else yeah like nintendo could afford to pull mario for a generation yeah. like it would suck but they have so much other shit microsoft doesn't really have anything right now yeah. i mean they have a lot of ips and stuff but they don't have like the thing like look yeah. at sony they have like they have they yeah. always have that that graphic with all these different characters yeah nintendo definitely has a lot of different characters that aren't mario uh microsoft does not they have Halo. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. But, you know, they, that at that point, they should know that Halo is so important. 
Yeah. That like they they either need to get it right or not do it at all. Yeah. But at the same time, like not doing it all could be like the worst thing to happen to Microsoft. Well, I mean hide it away and make a big hype when you make another one. But that's what they tried to do with Infinite. But at the same time, like we live in a world where the game that gets launched is not necessarily the game we wind up with a few years down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, famously, Rainbow Six Siege sucked at launch. Now it's one of the most popular games to play online. Yeah. You know, and we hear stories like that constantly. It's so I think Halo Infinite, like if they buckle down and figure out what's wrong and fix it, I think Halo Infinite could have a big revival. It could, and they've been trying, and they've been working yeah. on it, and it just, the updates just, are not great, and they've been yeah. very uh, few and far between, and, and the updates that happen don't have a lot in them, yeah. uh, and they've been cutting back. They, they cut whole... Uh, I think they, I think they cut split screen or something. They they cut a yeah, bunch they, of they stuff. Yeah, they cut a split screen split screen co op. They cut a lot of stuff that uh, they they thought they were going to be able to do and, yeah. and and couldn't hold their promise. So uh, I don't know. Next next they got to make a new Halo. They got to work on another one, and they got to pare it back a little. Well, bit. so Halo Four and Five were supposed to be the start of like a whole new trilogy, a whole new saga. But the story um, of Halo 5 was received so poorly mm -hmm. that Halo Infinite just basically skips all that and moves right, right on to something else to essentially start fresh. I don't I didn't think... I mean, I'm not a Halo guy, but I really didn't understand what the hell was going yeah, on. Yeah, because like, there was basically an entire game missing between Halo 5 and Infinite. Mm -hmm. I, when you were saying, like, pair Halo back and start fresh again, I don't think they can afford to do that again because they just technically did that yeah so i mean that what else are they gonna do i don't know just continue from infinite <sighs> infinite two more yeah. more infinite this time i don't know but like they, they've got they've clearly got to do something master chief literally just wakes up and he's like give me a gun and they're like here it is yeah and he's like all, yeah, right, all right here we go point me in the direction and they're like that way and he's like ah cool and he just starts shooting yeah and that's the story of the start of halo infinite. i mean if we want to be honest that's just like that's the that's what every halo game should just be the, the problem is like they overcomplicate halo they overthink halo it has this like stupid lore and like backstory yeah. and history and stuff when it essentially just boils down to aliens are bad shoot the aliens i think at the beginning they say something about cortana and he goes what would you say how'd you know that name and he's like sorry i i stumbled over my words and then uh 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 I mean, uh, uh, crunchies. Do you want a do you want a yeah. Dorito? He's like, oh yeah, sure. Sorry, I had a flashback. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, I played a little bit of the Halo single player, and then I was like, I get it, just run around shooting yeah. and stuff, and it was fun. Like the 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 gameplay loop was kind of fun, but then I got to the multiplayer, and I was like, I just don't think this type of game, this sort of like team based shooter, I don't think that's the game anymore. Yeah, I think that we've kind of moved on from that. I say that. And I'm playing the fuck out of Valorant, which is a team-based <laughs> shooter. Uh, anyway, uh, speaking of new games, Forspoken. Oh, boy. So this game, I've been shitting all over this since the first trailer. I was like, this game doesn't look good. Uh, and then it came out, and a lot of people are saying this game doesn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, however, Forspoken release trailer exploits bogus accolades yeah what's this about everything about the lead up to the release of forspoken square enix is a big new open world action oh, rpg it's square enix oh, oh oh get ready oh no get, re <laughs> get ready in six months when we talk about how this game's being pulled um everything about the game's uh release um lead up to the release has been low-key a mess um but you wouldn't know that from the launch trailer which stays upbeat on the modern day magical adventure by taking a bunch of words out of context and spinning them into deceitful accolades this Forspoken trailer is kind of telling us that the game might not actually be that good. And here's how I know trailer editing aficionado Derek Liu said in a TikTok video that blew up over the weekend. The biggest red flag are the quotes which are either one word long or two words long. <laughs> he proceeds to go through each phrase flashed on the screen uh, during it found the original source it was from, and read the larger context aloud. In almost every instance, the meaning was a very different from the way the words were presented in the trailer and not intended to be taken as unambiguous praise. In one example, 
Square Enix lifted the word beautiful from a December preview published over on Distractify. In context, however, the quote wasn't saying that for spoken was it was beautiful, but that it had the potential to be a beautiful story-driven game that will pull that will pull your heartstrings with each new chapter. It was, after all, a preview and not a review of the final game, though the site's editor said she did not take issue with the word uh with how the word was used. That seems kind of like tame, I think. In another, I'll skip to in another example, the Final Fantasy Maker quotes the word impressive from Game Informer. The only problem is that the, wor- the word in question doesn't even come from a hands-on preview, but from a news write-up of a gameplay trailer from the Sony State of Play. Uh, phrase traversal abilities are impressive, allowing for fast movement in and out of combat, both in aerial and aquatic situations. So all of these accolades seem to be from previews. Yes. Like not even people this from trailers from, from yeah, these p- people are, these, responding these to are trailers. people looking at trailers these are not from people who have actually played the game that's what i've always said about this game is that it's just particle effects yeah and that there's not going to be any su- substance in the actual freaking game game informers actual review of the game gave it a 7.5 out of 10 it did not include the word impressive instead describing main protagonist phrase overall adventure as not without its highlights 7.5 is pretty high for this game. Yes. Like, like it it I mean the the it got like nines but but it also got a lot of like yeah. fives and sixes. So 7.5 is pretty good. Yeah. I just No, and the article was on with other things, but I think it's like it's fascinating to me. Like is it for a smoker is not the only example of this happening, but like it, it, it's kind of the most obvious case of it because like it people don't people are not looking forward to this game it's not getting good reviews but all of a sudden here's this like trailer with like all these like high accolades yeah or like trying to make it sound like it more impressive than it actually is and like they they kind of got caught <laughs> yeah uh i don't know what's going on like when we first saw this we we saw like the dialogue but between- not when we first saw it. i think it was the second trailer where we started to see like dialogue between the main character and her arm yeah and uh it was like kind of cringy and weird. Yeah. Uh, it was like they were trying to be like a Marvel movie. It was trying it to be like that working. bad Joss Whedon style. Yeah. yeah. Like like quirky. Snarky, yeah. Uh, and this past week, I saw some clips making the rounds on Twitter. And there's a lot of people coming to its def- the game's defense saying like, uh, you wouldn't have a problem if Spider-Man was talking like this. Or you wouldn't have a problem if this was in a Marvel movie or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I think that... Uh, it's it's not that it's written poorly. I think that it's acted poorly. It doesn't sound or look like like co- I think it, it doesn't sound or look like 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 it's like it's natural. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's written natural, but not performed naturally. Well, I think, and I think that uh, it, it's super forced. And I think that we're over that type of. We're definitely over that type of writing style yeah there's been way too much i mean of that i think you can argue that it, it was written badly and acted badly because me, me i don't want to say it was acted badly because i feel bad it's it was probably acted just fine but it was put together poorly yes like maybe bad takes of two different people slapped together in an unnatural way i, I can, don't want to put the onus on the actress and actor i can i can point to um alien resurrection the fourth alien movie was actually written by joss whedon but they tried to apply like his weird quirky dialogue style to a to an alien movie which is always like super serious and grim and like horrifying and the two tones just don't mesh yeah very well yeah so you have this weird juxtaposition of like maybe the words are written fine and maybe the actors are you know acting their hearts out but you put the two together and it sounds like it's being it's poorly written and poorly acted at the same time yeah so that's probably what happened with this game like maybe maybe somebody did write a very good script and maybe the actors are genuinely good actors but all the other elements around it and the context of what's happening just make it sound much worse than it actually is yeah and it's not it's it's not like the right time to do like a quirky fun little thing but i mean we're looking at it out of context too like i'm only looking at a clip of the quirky stupid dialogue yeah but to me it just looked like 
uh, like a like a friggin' like college project, you know, yeah. like like I don't know it, it, what it, was wrong. It but looks, something was unnatural. It looks like it. one of those games where like the humor came from the fact that the characters don't stop talking, and yeah. I hate games like that. Yeah, I, I, other than the, like when I see a new game, I'm looking past all of the like cool graphics and yeah. all of the like uh, story elements. And stuff. I mean, sometimes the story. I mean, story helps. Get me. I think yeah. I feel like people context and sometimes art style gets me too yeah but the what i'm trying to look for the most is how like what's different about this game while i'm playing it like yeah. what's what am i going to be doing in this game that is different than every other triple a game because mm -hmm. this looks like every other triple a game and it doesn't look like much it looks like there's like some traversal mechanics like yeah. some grappling or something some some double jumping i don't know but uh it looks like the big deal is just that there's particle effects and yeah. and, and that's it. So uh I've I I I'm not surprised that it's getting uh the type of uh heat that it's getting. I'm a little surprised by the amount of people that came to its defense for the quirky weird dialogue. Right. Because it's very obviously like out of like like something's wrong with it. It's it sounds like it like everything looked like it was trying to it, it was somebody trying to ape a style 10 years too late. Yeah. And like not being good enough at aping the style. Yeah. Like if they did this 10 years ago, we would be like, ah, that's how people talk. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, like a movie's trying to do it how people talk. Yeah. But now it's like people don't talk like that. We know what you're doing. You're trying to emulate people being weird and quirky. And it, it's, it, it's it, not. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on to you. Yeah. Like it, this isn't how people talk. You're just trying too hard. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they, I think there's a demo for the game. So you can try it. <laughs> and I think the demo even had problems when, yeah. it, when it launched. Um. Anyway, that's Forspoken. Another Square Enix game. <laughs> I am so sorry. Square, has Square uh, Enix done anything good recently? Yeah. Like, what's the... Um, I want to look at their latest releases and see if there's anything... Uh, any, any hope Anything here. good... From a non-Western studio. I'm hey man, I'm looking for anything. Anything <laughs> releases. I'm trying to. I mean, really, the only Square Enix games I was playing was like Tomb Raider and Hitman, like their Western stuff. Octopath they, Traveler Two comes out in February. Okay. <laughs> oh, Forspoken fails to credit localizers, quality te assurance testers. There you go. More stories about. Credit not being given in the video games industry. Great. Well, this list is... The list on their website is absolutely horrible. <laughs> um, okay, here's Wikipedia, which always has great lists. Yes. I gotta scroll a lot. Uh, all right, recently we got Crisis Core, Final Fantasy, Forspoken. We got Harvestalia. We got Dragon Quest Treasures, Star Ocean. Of a lot of Japanese studios. Lit Live Alive, remember that one? Yep. Uh, people love that one. Chocobo GP. <laughs> it was March of last year. Okay. Almost made it a whole year. Babylon's Fall was also oh, March of last yeah. year. They didn't. They haven't been having a good year. No. They have not been having a good... Neo, the world ends with you, but that's another Japanese game. It's... You know what? <laughs> Battle in Wonderworld. I'm not surprised. Ooh. I'm not surprised yeah. at all that they sold off all of their Western stuff. <sighs> that said, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's talk about Fortnite. Why don't? Why don't? Uh, why not? Uh, Fortnite on iOS is about to become even more limited experience. The game was removed from iOS and Mac app stores and Google Play in August of 2020 due to Epic Games' legal spats with Apple and Google, meaning those versions of Fortnite have missed out on many updates to and even entire sessions of constantly refreshed battle royale hit. Um, but starting on January 30th, players who got Fortnite from those platforms won't be able to spend V-Bucks to buy in-game items and will have to be older than 18 years of age to even play, Epic said in a tweet from its Fortnite status Twitter uh, account on Monday. Technically, if you got Fortnite from those platforms, you could still play the game if you happen to have it installed before it was removed from the app stores. Uh, but it's perpetually trapped in version 13.4. Uh, to give you an idea of just how far back that is, 
That means players haven't been able to experience things like the Marvel-themed season, which kicked off in August of 2020, wow. or the Ariana Grande concert, which took place in August 2021, or the recent introduction of the new island and dirt bikes, which were announced, which were added in December of last year. Uh, the changes, the changes announced Monday, will further cripple those versions of the game. Um, writer Andrew Weber. Andrew Webster already called Fortnite on iOS empty and dated shortly after the app was pulled. Epic puts the blame on Apple and Google's restrictions on Fortnite for the new changes, saying that it wants to be able to update all versions of the game to the most recent Epic Online Services suite with the latest parental control features, but coming limitations to iOS, Mac, and Google Play versions of Fortnite aren't just an opportunity for Epic to take shots at the two tech giants. They're part of they're part of efforts from Epic to step up its safety features for younger players. In December, Epic introduced special kid-focused accounts for Fortnite, Rocket League, and Fall Guys that have certain restrictions. Until a child gets consent from a parent or guardian, they won't be able to buy content in those games or use text or voice chat. A few weeks later, the company reached a $520 million settlement with the FTC over privacy violations and unintended in-game purchases in Fortnite. So they had to pay the FTC. Yes. It's unclear if or when the iOS, Mac, and Google Play versions of Fortnite might be restored to their respective app stores so that players could check out uh, the latest updates. Epic CEO Tim Sweeney, who liked one of my tweets, um, (laughs) seems hopeful that the game will return to iOS this year. Um, but there are still ways to play the game on Apple and Android devices. In the meantime, on iOS and Mac, you can drop into the island during NVIDIA's GeForce Now streaming service. Thanks to Xbox Cloud Gaming, you can play the latest version of the game on iOS or Android. No Xbox Game Pass res- uh, subscription required. Interesting. And you can download the game natively to Android from Epic's uh, website or via the Epic Games app on Samsung Galaxy. So 4. you can stream it from Game Pass completely <clears throat> free then? Uh, you, apparently. That's kind of on your iOS or Android device. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we knew that. I mean, I'm surprised it's even still on iOS. I, thought it was I think it's gone. mostly like if you've already downloaded it to your phone. Yeah. You can no, still play definitely. it. Yeah. Uh, but w- so... This is the game hasn't been updated for more than two years because it was put. Yeah, yeah. So is it because of an Epic Games update where they're going to make it so you have to be over the year over the age of eighteen, or is it an an Apple and Google? It sounds like an Epic thing. Okay. Yeah. And they just aren't able to retroactively update the iOS version because Correct. they removed it yeah. from the App Store. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's going to happen. I mean, that you fucking did this to yourself. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, we've talked about two years ago, we talked yeah. about this, or three years ago at this point, we were talking about this. Uh, we were kind of in support of Epic here. Yes. Because, uh, because Tim Sweeney liked one of my tweets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, because uh, it is a, a little crazy how much uh, Apple takes from developers and, uh, uh, yeah, they're just kind of being a being a bully. Uh, mm-hmm. But they're not the only ones who took like a huge percentage. Uh, yeah, it's not really even just about the percentage; it's about the the way that you have to go about like updates and also the in game purchases and stuff yes. like that. Uh, so, Epic was like trying really hard to fight against it. They pulled their the biggest game at the time, mm-hmm. uh, but now they're not the biggest game yeah. anymore. So they really don't have as much leverage as they once did, and. This is just something they're gonna have to. Yeah, they're gonna have to deal with. I mean, at a certain point, you have to like wonder. You know, are they still trying to do the right thing, or are they just like yelling at clouds at this point? Because I mean, yeah. like, look, we understand their plight, we understand their struggle, but they lost the lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at, at what point do you just swallow your pride and say like, okay, we'll play your game? No. I wouldn't. I'd be like, oh, I know, I know you. Off. I know you would. I'm off the, I, the the app store. I'm done. I know you wouldn't. But. I do like that they're requiring you to be over 18 to even play the game yeah. or or buy anything. Yeah, like I, you should have to be over 18 to buy a cosmetic item. Yeah, you know. I will be curious to see how people under the age of 18 get around this because yeah. if I was under 18 and I want to play Fortnite, I'd find a way around it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, like. 
I can understand. I mean, if I was under 18, I would like to maybe go to like 7-Eleven and buy a V-Bucks card or yeah. something. But like... But you won't even be able to spend V-Bucks in this version. Now that's... Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I don't think... I think that cosmetic items in games uh, or, or in-game purchases like this could be a really big problem for underage kids. Yeah. Well, yeah, certainly. But I don't know the way around that other than just completely locking them out of it. Yeah. I, I don't really see it being as that big of a deal locking kids out. If I was a kid, I might be a little upset. But uh, yeah. I don't know. Like, again, when I was working at GameStop, I would see people. I would see people come in all the time. Uh, kids would come in all the time and buy Microsoft points. Yeah. They would uh, buy a lot of Microsoft points. They usually buy it in a $10 denomination. And I learned it. While I was working there, they made it so that you can print out like a like a receipt that that had the 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 code for yeah. for the points, um, and then it got to the point where you could print out exactly what the person wants. So if they want a specific DLC, you can just print out the DLC. Yeah. You don't have to do the points. So people would come and go. Oh, I want ten dollars in Microsoft points, and I would go. Oh, I can give you a DLC if you want. Is there anything specific you want to get? And every single time, these kids would say, "I want to change my name." Yeah. Kids would come in every fucking week and change their name. Yeah. And they just constantly pay 10 bucks to change their name. Mm -hmm. That's a kid that shouldn't be allowed to have right. Microsoft points. Yeah. Changing your fucking name every week? Stop it. Yeah. That's a waste of 10 bucks. Pick a name yeah. that you like and keep it. The reason they're doing that is because they're getting in trouble and then they yeah. want to keep changing their name. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, Microsoft subpoenas, subpoenas Sony. In preparation of FTC lawsuit. Yes. Make this quick. Okay. Give, give, oh, it is actually quick. Uh, Sony issued a subpoena. To, uh, Microsoft issued a subpoena to Sony as part of the preparation facing the Federal Trade Commission in court in summer. The new filing in the case reveals that Xbox firm, uh, the Xbox firm served the subpoena, blah, blah, blah. However, on the day Sony requ uh, requested an extension to Friday, January 27th, um, the extension the exception was granted full details of the subpoena are not available, but the filing mentions that Microsoft and Sony are in an ongoing negotiations as to what information the latter will provide. It appears to center around Sony's production capabilities, which presumably ties into Microsoft's defense against the FTC. Microsoft is currently in the fact discovery stage of prep, uh, prepping its defense. Uh, the company has until April 7th to gather the information it needs ahead of the hearing before an administrative judge at the FTC on August 2nd. So it sounds like Microsoft is subpoenaing Sony because they want information that can prove that Sony is so far ahead of them in the video game space <laughs> that the only way for Microsoft to compete is to buy Activision. <laughs> interesting play i think that's because this this whole case microsoft has been trying to say that like they are a distant third in the video in the console video game market yeah um they're trying to make themselves look like the weak underdog that like could go out of business at any moment i mean look halo's our top character and like we fucked up their past three games we clearly don't know what we're doing we need to buy a call of duty to so Sony, I don't think subpoenaed Microsoft, but they did get a bunch of information that, yeah. that kind of went around them and got a bunch of information yeah. about how well Microsoft's doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess Microsoft's play now is to just show how you know, yeah. how far behind they are from, yeah. from Sony. Um, again, I like to bring up that according to Phil Spencer, the main reason for this buyout of Activision Blizzard is not for Activision Blizzard, but it's for King the mobile studio because uh, Microsoft doesn't have a big presence on mobile, which is true. But in that case, just fucking buy King. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. Finally, uh, finally, finally, Jack Pacific has officially revealed it's Mario movie toys. And that's it. All right. There's a picture. Look at them. They look like Mario movie toys. Yeah, they, they, these are not exciting at all. No, I mean, it's that's kind of, it, just the four, just these four uh, for now. I'm sure. Oh. I'm sure there'll be more coming later. Um, Mario looks horrible. I think it's the um, the joints are weird. No, I'm looking at his face. Oh, his face. Oh, yeah, that's he's got a weird face. It's Luigi like he looks awesome. Yeah. I am. I am surprised that they have like uh, elbow and knee articulation. It's figures like this, I'd imagine they wouldn't even bother with shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's oh, nice. Peach looks weird too. <laughs> Toad, uh, Toad looks fine. 
Toad and Luigi look great. Yeah. These figures will start hitting store shelves on February 26th, at which point we will be able to see the full line of merchandise that will also include more posable figures, accessories, play sets, plushies, and remote control toys. That fire-breathing Bowser will probably make an official appearance around that time, too. There's also a... Uh, they, 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 uh, did we show it on the show? They showed... Uh, the show, show, show. Yeah. They showed um, the McDonald's toys. I think we did. Yeah. yeah. And they looked okay. Yeah. Eyes so small on Mario. Yeah, his eyes are weird. Yeah. He's, he's got weird eyes. Anyway, uh, that's it. That's it. That's all we have. That's it for the... And yeah. That now now we do... Uh, I we think can... this is the... Yeah! Yeah! This is by Wolfman Zach, and it says, That's not bisexual lighting, girl. You are being pursued by the thing. <laughs> I didn't know this was bisexual lighting. Almost all of my videos have this lighting. Oh, with yeah. The blue you, on one side and the know, red on the other. No, not bisexual I lighting. was, what was I? I was sending out a code. I didn't know that. No, I mean, maybe. <laughs> when when I when when people found out I had a girlfriend, yeah, a lot of people were like, "Whoa, <laughs> I thought you were gay," and a lot of people were disappointed. Oh, well, that happens. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Anyway, pursued by the thing. Now uh, we'll talk to you people real quick. Yes, we will start with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf podcast. I saw the thing. I was watching the thing on a plane ride once, mm -hmm. and everybody kept walking by me asking if it was that movie, The Gray, where Liam Neeson like fights wolves. <laughs> I saw. I saw that on a plane. Yeah, yeah. Did I see it on a plane? When did I see that? I don't know. I saw that. That movie was fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean that's a good movie, but like people keep asking me if I'm watching The Gray, and meanwhile, there's a fucking dog turning inside out, and like, nah, this is clearly the thing. <laughs> Different movie. Yeah. Uh, M. Skelton from last week's Wolf Den podcast said, "What is one game that you thought was good when you were kids that ruined that you ruined for yourself on a second playthrough when you were too old?" Appreciate the content. I got it. an easy one, but oh. I didn't sneeze. Uh, I think I'm. I think I know what game you're thinking of. Say it. Uh, Cyborg Justice. Yes. Yes. I, I lost it. Okay. Uh, there was a there's a side scrolling beat 'em up in the Sega Genesis we had when we were kids it's called Cyborg Justice. You play as a cyborg. You can pick your body parts. Um, to have different abilities. Sounds cool. Game is trash. We played it in 2013. We tried we to do a let's play. I don't yes. know if we ever actually no, did, we never did. To do it. No, because we didn't have the proper setup for it. No, we we recorded it, but the capture card didn't capture any footage. Yeah, because uh, we played it straight from the Genesis. Um, and we had like an upscaler that just showed black. Yeah, it did, didn't work at all. Uh, and yeah, that game sucks. That yeah, game is game really is bad. Good. But I played the fuck out yeah. of it. The biggest problem with that game is that right on the first level, there is a giant gaping hole in the middle of... It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you can go up and down on the ground. Just like, you know, Turtles in Time. Yeah. Uh, but imagine in the first level, there is just a hole that you can't jump over. Which, here's the thing. Like, We've gotten farther in that game. Yeah. Like we used to clear that hole. How did we clear that <laughs> hole? <laughs> you have to I think you you can you build your cyborg in the very beginning. Yeah. I think you need a specific cyborg are, build to jump there over are that high hole. High jumping legs. I yeah. remember that. I think you do like a somersault thing and, yeah. and leap over it. It's very stupid. Yeah, it's not a good game. It, the, it's clunky, it's slow. And uh, having to do precision platforming didn't help. Now that I think about it, another good example is Gremlins 2. Oh, on Game Boy. For the Game Boy game. We yes. played the shit out of that. Yeah. That game also sucks. That game does and suck. And I saw somebody on YouTube talking about it, and they mentioned how there's a level that is almost impossible to get through unless you have a specific like item that you lose if you get hit yeah. so you need the item you need to hold on to the item and then you need to do a very specific thing in order to get past it it's not a puzzle game no it's just a platformer and i was watching and i was like yeah i remember that yeah I remember that. yeah no that was bullshit i never got past that part so yeah mm -hmm. gremlins 2 and cyborg justice yeah. those are your two games two examples yeah super like potato says mario rabbits did so well because it went on sale to oh this is because i was talking about it did good because the guy cried yeah 
uh, went on sale to like fifteen dollars. So damn often, like a uh, year after release, it did well at launch. Yeah, like I'm willing to bet that ninety percent of that game's sales were from those discounts. I guess it's one of the rare instances of Ubisoft being pro-consumer with frequent sales of old titles, but it's so obvious that they kind of shoot themselves in the foot with that because why on earth would you spend $60 on this game right now when we just know it'll end up being dirt cheap? It's not like it's a big series that we have to jump on ASAP to avoid spoilers or something. I think what he's getting at is the new Mario Plus Rabbids. You could just wait and it'll be on sale. Well, that's something... I've been saying for a while now, yeah. like you, you don't have like it doesn't really pay to buy games immediately at launch. I mean, I guess it kind of hurts the the developers and the publishers in the long run because they more so rely on sales from the first month mm -hmm. more than anything. But at the same time, like you know, your money is valuable, so wait, yeah, to get the game. I mean, but to his point about like you know it not being part of a big franchise like it's a mario and rabbits like those yeah. are two big franchises those are two big deals the thing is that it's a it's a first party character mm -hmm. game but not like a mainline thing yeah so the sales are gonna the yeah. sales are gonna happen muhammad hater says i live down the street from ubisoft montreal will the value of my apartment tank if they go under is this how real estate works uh, it it might it might actually it might because Cause that they are a huge they're part. huge yeah they're a huge employer of that area yeah I was I I didn't put it in the keep because I didn't want to talk about although it. although real estate in Montreal is fucking insane yeah. I hear so I maybe not but I didn't put this in the keep because I didn't want to talk about Ubisoft again for a second week in a row but apparently um, there was a company wide meeting after the uh, the whole balls in your court email that Yves Gilmo sent out and like all the employees were like really mad at him and like asking him serious questions about it. And he was just like pretending like nothing was wrong. <laughs> and I think that's like a big problem with Ubisoft is that like every time there is an issue, he just goes, he just keeps pretending like nothing is wrong. Yeah. Like we don't have people sexually harassing her. I think he just doesn't care. Uh, no, I think he, I think he, it, how do I put this? He, he does care, but he, he doesn't want there to be any problems. He just yeah. wants people to make these games and get them out and make him lots of money and just keep going. Everything is fine. Yeah. Nothing is wrong here. Please do not stare at the man behind the curtain. That type of it thing. It seems like he just was born into this like well, empire. It, his family created the company. Yeah, yeah. So so he's just trying to maintain the uh the wealth. Yeah. And that's it. Actually, this ties back into talking about Welcome to Chippendales because <laughs> there's like an episode where they're talking about all the financial problems that the company's having, but Camille Nanjiani's character, like the the owner and CEO or whatever, is still spending money and doing shit to make it look like everything's fine, like right. nothing is wrong. It's it's one of those situations. He just doesn't want to put out this facade that no he no he's putting up a facade that everything's okay when in reality employees aren't happy you players aren't happy mm -hmm. nobody's happy with the way ubisoft's been the past few years the konami man says bob i still use discs with my ps5 i have a bunch of ps4 games on discs so to play them on my ps5 i need a disc drive also because i didn't get a ps5 until last month i have a good number of ps4 games on disc with free ps5 upgrades which quote instantly gave me a nice ps5 library once i got it which ones have that upgrade because uh there's... I remember when PS5 came out, I was like, where's my fucking upgrade? Some games, it's still like very hit and miss what games have updates and some yeah. games don't. I know the first party games have updates. Um, actually, Avengers had it as an update. You can play the PS5 version on the PS5. Uh, Cyberpunk has one. Um, the Resident Evil games all have free updates to the PlayStation 5 version. Um, but again, it's not everything. Yeah. So you have to like, you have to look and I, I think it's easier now than it was before, like selecting the PS4 and PS5 version. But the fact that you have to sell, like that's even an option that it doesn't just give you the PS5 yeah, version it's, is it's, insane. It's you should have to look for the PS4 version if you're yeah. on your PS5. It should give you the PS5 it should even, version. Yeah, it should give you the PS5 version. It shouldn't even give you the option for a PS4 well, version. Well, I understand the option because like it might be cheaper or or there might be something about the ps4 version it maybe runs you, maybe worse you want to play with a friend or something or maybe it's just the version that you have already but you should have to jump through hoops to even see the ps4 yeah. version 
Anyway, uh, Urbus Creation says, I love playing Tom Clancy's Division 2. I played it a ton on Google Stadia <laughs> with Stadia. Sh- oh, I want to talk about Stadia shutting down as part of oh. service shutdown. With Stadia shutting down, Ubisoft gave me the game plus New York expansion for free. Where does Division 2 take place? Uh, Washington. Oh. It's the only UB game I play. That, I mean, that's cool i mean it, listen the google stadia closure was best thing yeah to happen and i think the, the fact that ubisoft was willing to give you like the games you were playing on their platform was a good thing that's great yeah so where do you play if you were playing it on stadia where are you playing probably on you play on ubisoft's their uh, own streaming yeah. service and don't they have a thing store. with it's don't they store. have a thing with luna they do have a thing with Luna. But are you are you streaming it on Luna? You play you play as their store slash launcher. It's like their EA Origin. I know, but if he's playing it on Stadia, I'm assuming he's got to be streaming it. Yeah. Now, Trevor Grover, Trevor Grover, I got drift on my pro controller. I think clicking the right stick in during Splatoon three a million times has messed with it. That might do it. I uh, am making a video on Joy-Con Drift this week because of the new Gully Kit sticks. I've been seeing a lot of like reviews and videos about like the Gully Kit um, all sense controllers now on the yeah Joy-Cons. they work and they're very good. Okay. But uh, I just don't like the the whole marketing around it because yeah. it's they're saying that it it's the it it will never drift and it's like will it never drift? Because <laughs> everything dies eventually. Yeah. Like you can't say it will never drift. It 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 will drift less often, mm-hmm. but you know, calm down a little bit. Yeah. Also, they have like patents and shit. But like, what are the patents? Yeah. Show me the patent. They have Chinese patents and international patents. They have no American patents, and also they can't have a patent on Hall Sensing technology because they're fucking Dreamcast. Right. right. So like, I don't understand. But it's cool. I just think you know. I wouldn't do it as a preventative measure. I would yeah. do it if you had the drift. Anyway, if your pro controller thumbstick drift, I'm, I'm so, you got. I got a new pro controller. Yeah. I'm sorry, you kind of screw. You could try calibrating it, but you kind of just need a new pro. I controller. mean, maybe try reaching out to Nintendo. Maybe they'll fix that too. But I doubt it. They, they might. Focus on. Then look, for all tens of persons, Nintendo has a very good customer service. Yeah. So, uh, I will say though. I tried buying a Pro Controller a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Nowhere to be found. Really? Yeah. And I'm on Amazon now. Only one I see is the Xenoblade Chronicles one for $95. Okay. No Pro Controllers to be found. Amazon is not a good website for buying Pro Controllers. Like official Nintendo Pro Controllers. But I went to Best Buy and GameStop and uh, sold out everywhere. Really? Yeah. So there's a Pro Controller shortage right now. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, well, we're in the chat for two seconds. All right. Uh, oh, we do go. we have... Uh, oh, notifications? Yeah. Uh, nope. Okay. M. Skelton says, Hey, Bob, with Tears of the Kingdom coming out soon, been thinking about replaying Breath of the Wild. Should I play the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Remastered or Pop Tropica on the DS first? <laughs> no. You should play um, Pilot Wings on the 3DS but in order to understand everything that's happening in the new Zelda, you need to uh, get all of the stars in all of the missions in, in, in the game. Yes. Which is fucking impossible because yeah. I'm still trying to do it. I've had this <laughs> game for like 10 years. Uh, George McFarlane, why are some companies so obsessed with graphics? Nintendo's graphics are shit and their games are still good. <laughs> that's, where, a, that's where I'm at. It's a... Um... Because that, that's like the easiest thing for you to visually see it, like of a game's quality. Like if graphics are good, it, it tricks your brain into thinking like the game must be good. It's easy marketing. Yeah, exactly. They just show the game and you're like, oh, oh go, 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 yeah. I want to bring up this tweet by Jackson today. He said, I'm Bob Wolf pilled and I'm going to go all in on indies now. He said this the <laughs> other day that um, he's getting sick of all these AAA games. Yeah. And he's experiencing the wonderful world of indie games. I mean, there's a lot of really good indie games out there. And then Chaotic Derps says, are you still pumped for Gravity Circuit? Fuck yeah, I'm pumped. <laughs> Have you heard of Gravity Circuit? Sounds familiar. The demo is on uh, Steam. I don't mm-hmm. know if you have a way to play that. But uh, it is um, Mega Man X 
but you're punching. Okay. And there's like combos and stuff. And this is your this is gonna be your favorite part. You get a grappling hook. Ooh. Yeah. Grappling hooks do make games better. So Oh yes, I've really, seen that. I've seen this. It's yeah. really cool. And you fight the bosses by punching them. Yeah. It's really cool. Oh, so this is coming to Mac OS. Yeah. It's coming to Switch and everything. Oh good. Yeah. Uh I don't know if the uh, demo is gonna be anywhere but Steam. Oh right? look. But the demo is yeah. like two levels pretty yeah. good. Also, the other game that I played, I'm pretty sure I told you about it. Um Vengeful Guardian Moonlighter or yes. something. That is uh uh Shinobi. Yes. Without mm-hmm. darts, without Sherokins though. Oh wow. So that's a little weird. But yeah. uh it's very good. I heard it's a little short, okay. but uh, I have I haven't uh, that had a demo too on Steam. Uh, I didn't play the full thing yet. Anyway, Gravity Circuit should be out any minute now. Uh lost my place. I'm gonna look who's online right now. Uh yeah, people talking about how great Gravity Circuit is. Did you play Roller Drum yet? No. Oh, come on, man. I, I don't even think I downloaded it. Because <sighs> that was free at one point, right? No. I made it up then. <laughs> it's on Steam, so you can play it on your toilet. <laughs> play it on your toilet. I'll yeah. play it on the toilet. Um, yeah. My toilet has Steam. There you go. Uh, uh, <clears throat> hmm. Play Roller Drum. It's very fun. I I yes. I'll, I'll, I got a lot of things to play. You know. It has a free two hour demo via PS Plus. Oh, maybe that's what we were. Yeah. Maybe that's why I thought it was free. Yeah. All right, we're waiting. AJ, thank you for having All right, everybody. thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfton Podcast is every Tuesday night at eight PM Eastern, right here on Twitch TV slash Wolfton. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash Wolfton Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Anchor.fm slash Wolfton Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where. You get this show from folks. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. We, I mean, I will be back on Thursday, I think, to do a live stream here on twitch.tv slash wolfden. Uh, what else did I want to say? Uh, I'll have a video out on Thursday also about the Joy-Con drift stuff and about doing the whole mod and whatever. Um... I feel like I had an announcement of some sort, but uh, (laughs) sorry, I got nothing. Uh, Thanks for hanging out. Go say hello to AJ. He's playing Pokemon. See you later. Goodbye. Bye. Is this the bye button? Yeah, it is. Goodbye.